So I did my first book uh, with LL Cool J. It's called I Make My Own Rules. And naive me, I was invited to a book signing event. And I would never forget my mom and I, I got, actually got pulled over on the way to it. My mom and her friend, and we all went, she was excited. I was excited. I got pulled over by the, by the cops. I'm like, I'm on my way to a book signing. And they actually let me go out and get a ticket. I get there and I'm sitting at the table with my little name in the front. And like, nobody wanted to see me, Starsky Wilson. Nobody wanted to see me. Right. Uh-huh. They, 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 so my name's on that book. But it was LL Cool J's book. And it was the first time, you know, 26, 27. I was like, oh, okay. So you know, nobody cares that I wrote the book. This is all about LL Cool J. Note <laughs> to self, made the adjustment, never ever had to have that situation happen again. It was humbling. And sometimes, most of the time, you need to be humbled so that you can put things in perspective. Uh, but one of the greatest things that came from that day, aside from me being embarrassed, uh, was meeting this gentleman who actually had a bunch of people at his table because he uh, he was doing some amazing things back then. That was like 25 years ago, and he's still doing it. Uh, his latest, actually, I bought both of his latest books. Um, the new kid I have in my hand right now, and Class Act, let me pull that out as well. I have both of these books that I purchased myself because I want to support. Let me welcome award-winning cartoonist, Mr. Jerry Craft. Hey. Hey. I remember that. I didn't think anyone wanted to see me either. And I, I, I didn't have LL's name on my book. I just had mine. You, but- you had a <laughs> table full. I was like, who is this guy? And we sat there. Now, you were so gracious. You and your wife sat there with me and my mom and, and her friend, Deborah. And we, you know, we chatted and got to know each other that day. And we've done a couple of projects. We did a project together, you and I. We did a children's book for Margot Candelario. Uh, yeah. Yep, yes, beautiful, beautiful. So tell me about these books. And these are for middle school age, uh, yeah. preteens or teenagers. Tell me about the, the impetus for Class Act and New Kid. Well, it, it's kind of loosely, well, they're both graphic novels. So for those that don't know that, they're like just a, like a 250 page comic book. So it's all illustrated. And, you know, it's loosely based on my life of being born in Harlem, growing up in Washington Heights. I always wanted to be um, an artist. And my parents did not want me to be an artist because they thought that I'd be living in their basement until I was 60 because they didn't think you could make a living. You know, they only knew the term starving artist. And um, so instead of letting me go to music and art or art design in Manhattan, they sent me to a school in Riverdale called Fieldston, where I was one of the few kids of color in my class. And when I thought about that, I was like, you know, I've, I've not really seen that done in graphic novel format. So I pitched it a few years ago and Harper Collins picked it up and it has been a dream come true ever since. It's beautiful. Um, but it's done in a comic book. Those of you who appreciate it's, it's a graphic novel for sure. But your your style has always been comic strippy, yep. you know, like and and so you somehow captured that as well in in this story uh, of little Jerry, I guess, little brown, little brown young man. I'm showing some of this. Um, what's been the reception? It has been like I couldn't have written it myself uh, from both a critical standpoint and consumer, I mean, which is, you can't beat that because it, it shows that, you know, Karen, a lot of times people think that um, books with little brown boys and brown girls are only for little brown boys and little brown girls, you know, because a lot of times our, our things don't cross over in the same way, you know? Um, you know, in my lifetime, I had like Fat Albert is the one of the only ones that really everybody my age grew up watching it. And you don't really see a lot of things that replaced it, you know? So my goal in life was to always make these iconic black characters that are for our boys and girls, but also so that others can see and be like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool. I like that story. I can identify with that too. Well, I want to say thank you. Uh, As someone who has um, boys uh, who are of the age range to read both of these books. Um, so, and one, uh, we picked up New Kid last fall. 
uh, because what? I've got a middle schooler uh, who is transitioning. So our family's moving. Um, so I was able to flip through at a black black owned bookstore in St. Louis uh, and see the new kids, see what it was about uh, and try to be able to frame that uh, for a sixth grader who's going to be going to a new school uh, this coming year in a new um, new geography. Uh, right. So thank you for the work. Um, and thanks for that, um, that consideration. I wanted to pick up on this last point. I really appreciate it um, because I was talking to a group of educators uh, in the middle of the country about racial equity, gender justice, like, uh, but broadly, most specifically about racial equity just after Charlottesville a few years ago. Right. And, and I was talking to them about, about our freedom schools work. We use the culturally responsive pedagogy. We're very, inter, uh, very clear that the books need to have black and brown children if they're for black and brown children. Right. And someone raised, a, raised their hand and said, well, what about our white children? It's a predominantly white district. I said, they're even better for them because part of what we need to know and what we need to affirm is that people of color have been the global majority uh, for most of all of our lives. Right. Uh, and this frame that we have. So it, it's helpful for white children to see books with black and brown people in them so that they begin to situate themselves within a wider context of a globe where they are not in the majority uh, in this global society. Now, can society. I add to that? To see Please. black and brown children in these books who aren't suffering all the time, you know, yes. and are not being, you know, uh, chased by the police, or it's a book about slavery or civil rights or gangs. Now, again, not that those books aren't important because they are, but I wanted to add to the narrative. And, you know, how often do you see like just a, a kid just going to school and it's just, you know, trend, going from Washington Heights to Riverdale, like that was the biggest thing that day is, you know, yeah. kind of microaggressions as opposed to this, the weight of the world always, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes, I had um, I had Angie, Angie Thomas, who wrote The Hate You Give on yep. recently with Ashley Woodford, and uh, they were brought together by Danielle Clayton to do a book called Blackout, which was kind of a, uh, a group of black women authors writing a book together yep. about black children and joy during a blackout in New York, in New York, with no I cops. No, did you? OK, yep, I sure did. And and. I didn't think about how groundbreaking that was, but we were talking earlier about how publishing will lean into and give dollars to black pain because that's a commodity for them. But they're also perpetuating a narrative that doesn't, I, I, you know, I was just thinking about my childhood growing up in East Orange. My neighbor called up today. We spent all day out summers every summer. Right. And if it rained, we were in somebody's house playing cards, Uno, you know, Clue, right. Monopoly. There was joy. You know, we played kickball. If somebody had to come down the street, we all moved out the way. We played hot peas and butter. It was, I was we just rode about our to bikes. Say hot peas and butter. Hot peas hot and peas but butter. Freeze like, tag. Freeze uh, tag. Mother, may I? Come Bodies. on. Yep. And and for me, my childhood was amazing. You know, oh, I and I I didn't have the oh I'm fearing the cops because I lived in an all black neighborhood with black people that all kind of part of a community. We had a neighborhood watch that we didn't need, but it turned into cookouts and stuff in the, you know, we shut down the streets and have fr fish fry. But where's that story, you know? And Absolutely. folk that don't come from our culture, that this is what they know of it. So they're gonna give money to it. And if that's what's selling, because that's what you're pushing, then that becomes who we are because that's the literature that's out there. And so I'm, let me just continue to applaud you, that blackout book with Angie Thomas and, and those great writers, Ashley Woodford, let me give all of their names. Uh, Nick, John, Nick Stone, Nick Stone, Tiffany yeah. D. Jackson and Danielle Clayton, God bless them. Uh, but you've been always doing this kind of stuff. Jeremy. Yeah, but I couldn't get published because when I met you, I was self-published in my mama's voice books because I couldn't get traditionally published. And I got so many rejection letters that I actually gave up on being traditionally published until 2014. I did, I illustrated a book for Scholastic and I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's changing. And then it's, it's kind of funny that the first book that I get to write and illustrate for, you know, HarperCollins, one of the big five, wins the, the Newbery Award, the Coretta Scott King Award, and the Kirkus Award. It's literally the only book in history to win those three awards. Wow. And it was give like, him some applause for that, because uh, he's yes. saying a thing right now. 
and New York Times bestseller. Come on, give them, give them all of that. Real talk, real talk. Yeah, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And, and to have these kind of books and not growing up on that, because as you know, Karen, we grew up around the same time. Anytime something good was gonna happen, like, oh, hey, mom, I just got into Harvard. I'm, you know, I'm going to college. What happened? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And then the acceptance letter falls down to the ground in slow motion, like, Ricky, no! <laughs> right, 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 so, right. So it made it seem like if you got anything good that happened, something bad was going to come immediately and take it away. We never left the movies feeling good, right? No, it's true. I, I was thinking about Beach Street. Ah. All right. Uh, yep. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. Wait a minute. Let me see. Good. Yep. No, you're right. I mean that 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 is almost like a trope, though, because yes. you know art actually doesn't just imitate life; it informs life. Right. We yes. we follow art in this culture that we're in. So that's why not just diversity of thought, but we have to tell these stories that aren't in the same stereotype. I think it's lazy. So, you know, for somebody like you and shout out to Harper Collins, because this is this is showing that there is a change and a shift in the wind because we're almost, I think, demanding it. We have to see ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's been amazing. And and I'm in a book that comes out tomorrow called Black Boy Joy, where it's 17 black male authors that what? are just writing stories about joy. Yep. Wait, uh, wait, what? Black Boy Joy comes out tomorrow. Comes Seventeen, out tomorrow. besides 17. you, Jerry Craft. Who else is in? Who Jason else is contributing? Oh wow! Oh uh, yeah. Let's see. I actually. Oh, here's a cover by Kadir Nelson. Check that out. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, yeah. That is beautiful. Wow. I mean, that is beautiful just to have, just to have because it's beautiful. Yes. Like. Now look, I gotta go to I gotta go order this now. Golly, y'all yeah. gonna y'all yeah. stretch stretching my budget this month. Eight six six eight zero. I bought oh, yeah. a watch that today. Like ball, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. So, how did you become one of the seventeen in Black Boy Joy? Um, I you know I guess because they saw the work that I was doing, you know, and I never wanted to do the the misery books. In fact, in New Kid, I make up a book that the kids don't want to read called the mean street to South Uptown, where it's just like the urban story of the grit of today's urban grittiness. Like, cause all our books are always gritty. Like what is grit? Down those <laughs> you know? mean streets and right. monster. Mean, and, no, uh, you're right. Struggling in the South side of somewhere. And, um, you know, so I didn't want to go down that road. So I always ended up self publishing because I couldn't find a publisher that wanted happy books. And um, so I think that they they saw the kind of books that I do with New Kid in Class Act, and they invited me to be a part of it. And it is absolutely amazing. Covered by Kadir Nelson, um, and it drops. Uh, I think it drops tomorrow. Tomorrow Wednesday. Tell me what your story wow. is in Black Boy Joy. What'd I actually did uh, a comic. You know, it's the only comic because all the others are uh, amazing writers. And I, you know, love to draw. So um, there's just the, the cover image there. Oh, so wow. I did like a little little comic part to about five page, you know. Oh, so you have to pick it up and see. I'm not going to give any spoilers okay. away. But like, like Jason Reynolds did a, a story about just a kid wanting to look fly for his first day of school. That's it. Whether he's going to yeah. put crease in his jeans or not, you know, and it's this genius that there are such simple things like remember catching fireflies, you know, like that was a big thing, skateboards and all that. And those are the kind of things where sometimes the biggest thing in my life was whether I wanted butter pecan ice cream or mint chocolate chip, you know, it didn't always have to have the weight of the world. And those are the kind of the, the stories that I couldn't see growing up so that I, I just do on my own. I'm actually, it does come out tomorrow. I just bought it um, because I want the hardcover because you want the hard, you want the hardcover for the book, for the bookshelves, right? Yes, you want yeah, the hardcover. You, you, so I usually buy a hardcover and then a paperback to read something that you could dog ear and write in uh, when you were collecting, uh, just giving y'all a little, cause that, that Kadir Nelson, John, that's going to be a collector's yes. item. 
yeah. like the cover yes. itself is just so beautiful. Um, and so congratulations on all of this.